Let me read uh, two or three very familiar verses uh, to you uh, tonight as we um, uh, just share a few thoughts. We have, as I mentioned, we've been going through and studying the carols of Christmas. And uh, we've studied, O little town of Bethlehem, joy to the world, hark the herald angels sing. And tonight, of course, what a beautiful night just to, uh, to think through the song, Silent Night, Holy Night. We, sign, we find the truth of that in Luke chapter 2. Beginning in verse 4, you know it, we'll put it up on the screen. But it says, And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, for there was no room, no place for him in the inn. Would you pray with me this evening? Father, we thank you so much that you loved us. Lord, you loved us enough so much to send Jesus Christ to earth. And Lord, that's what Christmas is all about, God coming to earth, God becoming man. Lord, you giving us your sons so that we in turn could become the sons of God. We thank you so much for that. And we thank you for the events of that, that night, Lord, 2,000 years ago when Jesus came to earth and Lord, not only forever changed the course of this world, but forever changed my life and the lives of so many people here this evening. We thank you so much for that. Thank you for the truth of this hymn, Silent Night, that we have sang for, for years. And Lord, honestly, many times have sang without even understanding it. Help us to understand the truth of it this evening. Help us to be able to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Without a doubt, um, Silent Night, uh, the Christmas carol that we're highlighting this evening, is the most loved. It is the most popular, uh, the most translated Christmas carol of all time. They say that this, this song, Silent Night, and we'll sing it at the conclusion of the service, Silent Night has been translated into more than 200 different languages. So no doubt the song is being sung today literally all around the world. They say that since 1978, there are more than 700 copyrighted recordings of this wonderful hymn. You name the artist. If they have a Christmas album, they most likely have, have sang and recorded Silent Night. And if I pulled you this evening, if I pulled you and asked you, what is your favorite Christmas carol? I'm confident that some of us, if not many of us, would say Silent Night. Yet quite frankly, if you're like me, uh, we've sang the song for years without really paying attention to what we are singing. And many would say that the song is more poetic because it's very poetic than it is the, uh, theological. But at times we sing things without even knowing what we're singing. For example, maybe you've done that, that little phrase in Silent Night, round yon virgin. Have you ever wondered what that said? For years, like somebody else, I thought it was saying round young virgin, and it made sense to me, you know, this virgin that's expecting, and she's round, you know, she's nine months pregnant, and so it's simply talking about this round young virgin, all right? That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the glory of God that is shining round this virgin. Sleep in heavenly peace. I, I, I hear that phrase and it kind of puts me out. Does it put you out? It kind of, you know, it's like this, you know, this tranquilizer drug. You know, sleep in heavenly peace. Well, as I thought through the Christmas story and the words of this song, two simple thoughts came to my mind that kind of reassured me and kind of uh, uh, encouraged me, and I trust they will for you this evening. The first is this, so very practical. The fact is this, life is crazy. Life is crazy. Now, now think with me. Although Joseph Morris, he, uh, as he wrote this um, and, and speaks of the silence and, and the calmness surrounding Jesus' birth, 
I can assure you that that night, the word calmness and silence and, and tranquil words like that are not words that Joseph and Mary would have used. As a matter of fact, if we would sit down this evening and we'd sit down with Joseph and Mary and say, well, let's just take a few minutes and interview and talk to us a little bit about what you went through on the night when Jesus was born. I'm sure that they would use words like humbling and, and scary and stressful and probably smelly and painful, no doubt. Ladies, imagine giving birth in a barn with no pain medication whatsoever, no epidurals, none of that, all right? dirty words that would have come to their mind no doubt the birth of their first son did not happen the way that they would have liked nor did it happen the way that they would have planned but but think with me this evening life often doesn't happen the way we plan it does it I think all of us could sit back and say, well, you know what? There were times that I thought I was going to go this way, and God sent me in a completely different direction. You know, I had all kinds of plans to do this and to do that, and man, life threw me a curveball, and I came to a Y and ended up going in a different direction, and you would sit back like Mary and Joseph and say, man, there are some crazy things that have taken place in my life. By the way, let me just warn you, there's a good chance that some of your Christmas plans tonight in the next few days will go awry as well. Guests will arrive late. Unexpected guests might show up at your house. You'll get less sleep. Somebody, somebody will say something completely inappropriate. The turkey will burn, and your perfect gift that you thought is the greatest gift in the history of the world, the person will look at it and be not near as excited about it as you were when you purchased it for them. The simple truth is this. Life is crazy at times. You and I, like Mary and Joseph, cannot run from the craziness of life. We must face it. I love the words of Jesus in John 16 and verse 33. Jesus said this. He said, in the world you will have tribulation. Man, if we stopped the verse right there, we'd walk away and say, oh my word, what a, what a discouraging, disheartening message Jesus is giving to us. What? In the world, we're going to have problems. In the world, we're going to have tribulation. The Life's going to be crazy. Jesus said, yes. In the world, you will have tribulation. But the verse didn't stop there. He said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. You see, all of us today can relate with the stress and the struggles of Mary and Joseph. Yes, life can be crazy as it was for them in Luke chapter 2. Yet it's precisely during the crazy times of life that we need something to calm our fears. That we need something to curb our anxieties. Something to make us slow down and just take a deep breath. Okay, the turkey burned. What are we going to do? What's the number to the closest pizza joint? We can make this happen. All right? There's times in the craziness of life that we just need to, that we need something to grab a hold of that will calm our fears, to shorten our fuses, and to strengthen our faith. And the answer... And Silent Night talks about it. The answer is Jesus Christ. You see, life is crazy. But but the second thing that I wrote down as I thought about this hymn is that Jesus brings calmness. Jesus brings calm. Jesus brings tranquility to our life. That's precisely the truth that that this song is trying to convey Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Now, now what did the writer of of, uh, Silent Night mean when he said that all is calm? Let me mention two things. The first is this, no doubt he was talking about the calmness of Bethlehem. He actually, and we won't take any more time and talk about the story, but when he actually wrote the poem, Pastor Joseph wrote the poem, he, he, 
He was picturing the city of Bethlehem, and he was picturing it uh, uh, on a calm, still night shortly after Jesus was born. The calmness of Bethlehem. Now, like with any parents, the birth of Jesus brought meaning to Joseph and Mary's struggles. They not only looked into the eyes of their son, and if you've ever held a newborn for the very first time, you know what it's like to look into the eyes of, of your son or your daughter, your first son or your daughter. Well, as Mary and Joseph held their newborn son there in Bethlehem, they not only looked into the eyes of their son, but they also had the awesome privilege of looking into the eyes of your Savior, of their Savior. You see, after the birth of Jesus, stress turned to serenity. Pain was transformed into praise. And, and the fear of the shepherds gave birth to faith. It, here's the idea that I think Silent Night teaches to me, and, and I trust that it teaches to you. All of us need a Bethlehem moment in our lives. Have you ever had a Bethlehem moment where, where, where you realize not only the significance of what took place in Bethlehem, but the calmness, the serenity of the arrival of the Messiah completely transforms and changes your life? A moment in which we realize that pain has a purpose. That, as Paul says, that God works all things together for his good. A moment when we look into the eyes of our Savior and we allow him to calm the fears of our life. Have you had a, a Bethlehem moment? When I'm talking about a Bethlehem moment, I'm speaking about a life-transforming moment. Where all of a sudden you realize that, that the Savior is greater than any problem that you have. He's even greater than your sin. And he's even greater than your condemnation. And you have a Bethlehem moment in which you turn to Jesus. And by faith you trust in him. The calmness of Bethlehem. But there's a second calmness that I would mention. It's simply the calmness of believing. And, and Joseph Moore talks about that in Silent Night. He says, Silent Night, Holy Light. The third verse says, Son of God loves pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face. With the dawn. This is my favorite phrase in the entire carol. With the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. It, it, those of us that know and understand the word grace, it's such a very special word, is it not? The, the word grace means to receive something that we could never, ever, ever deserve. That, that we could never earn. And, and, and as the writer, Joseph Moore, writes about Silent Night and what occurred there in Bethlehem, he realized that, that the coming of Jesus Christ demonstrated the very grace, the very redemptive grace of God. As Jesus came for the purpose of giving us something that we could never, ever, ever deserve. You see, God graciously offers life and peace to those who seek It's so easy for us to allow the noise of life to distract us from that which is really important. Is that, did anybody else go through that? I go through that. Life is such a race sometimes, and we're racing here, and we're racing there, and, and the noise and the distractions of life seem to, to detour me, my mind and my heart, from that which is really important. Quite frankly, there are way too many noises there are too many things that are calling out for our attention. And as a result, we fail to silently and quietly trust in the Savior. As I read and thought about Silent Night, there was a verse in the Psalms that came to my heart. Some of you will be familiar with this. Psalm 46 and verse 10. 
It simply says this, be still and know that I am God. Isn't that a great verse that ties right in with Silent Night? Be still and know that I am God. You might be sitting back saying, Brian, that's absolutely crazy because in the next 48 hours, I'm not even going to have five minutes to be still. People are coming and guests are coming. There's going to be kids running around the house. Uh, Elf is going to play 12 times on the television in the next few hours. And uh, there's going to be, you know, wrapping paper being thrown all over the place. It's going to be tough to uh, be still. I get that. But but let me ask you, when was the last time that, that you turned off the television? The last time that you disconnected from, from Spotify and stopped listening to music, you laid down your iPad and you just spent time with God. You were still and you realized that God was God. And you allowed God to speak and to move into your heart and in your life. You see, quite frankly, you and I will never, ever experience the reality of silent nights until, like Joseph Moore, we immerse ourselves in God's Word and we allow the reality of Christmas to become the rule of our life. And when we allow the reality of Christmas to become the rule of our night, Uh, of our life, the craziness, the noises of life are overshadowed. They're, 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 They're drowned out by the knowledge of God. And we're able to sing with Joseph Moore, Silent Night, Holy Night. So let me ask you tonight, have you experienced the dawn of redeeming grace? That's such a great truth. The dawn of redeeming grace where you have experienced the grace of God in your life. Are you experiencing the peace and the calmness that trusting in Jesus can produce? You see, God never promises us to protect us or to keep us from the storms of life. Storms come. But he does promise that he'll be with us in the midst of the storm. And in the midst of the storm, we can recognize that he is God. And we can accept and embrace the tranquility and the calmness that only he gives. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright.